Hey, I'm Iman, and today we're going to be talking about why pressure cookers can cook food so quickly. So, picture this. I am starving, and I want to make a succulent and very tender stew. So, I get some lamb, I get some vegetables, I get some very aromatic spices and I get some water and I put it all into a pot and then I turn on the heat and I start cooking. Now I'm very hungry and I want the food now. I don't want the food after several hours and that's how long it can take to make a very tender fall off the bone stew on a normal pot. But as I said, hungry now, so I want that quickly. I don't want to wait several hours, I want to wait maybe 10, 20, 30 minutes. So if I want to do that, I have to start thinking about a different way that I can try and cook that food. And that's where the pressure cooker comes in. So this is a very simple pressure cooker. This one doesn't have any fancy gadgets on it. It just goes on top of a standard burner or stove. And it can really speed up the process of making food. But to answer why it is this thing can cook so quickly, I'm going to first have to answer why does food take so long to cook in the first place. So to do this I'm going to use this balloon and I highly recommend that you get a balloon like this filled with water and give it a slap because it is a tremendously therapeutic thing. All right so here we have our balloon filled with normal tap water, okay? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to light a flame under this to heat it up a little bit and try and melt a hole in the bottom and make a great big mess right here. Alright, so here is my balloon. And here is my flame. Let's get, get, get ready here for a bit of leaking. And you can see the flame is going. We've got discoloration and everything. But it's not making a hole. And look at that. It's completely black. But the balloon is still intact. And I can keep doing this and nothing's going to happen. So the question is why? I'm clearly heating the balloon up but nothing is popping. So this flame is definitely hot enough to melt the plastic in the balloon. However, that heat is not being concentrated there because the water in the balloon is stealing that heat away. It's taking the heat for itself. So the water is trying to raise in temperature. And so the plastic can never reach the melting point of it and melt or burst away. And that is because water has a very high specific heat capacity. So that means that it takes a lot of energy to heat the water up. And more accurately, it takes 4,200 joules to heat one kilogram or one liter of water by one degree Celsius. So you have to keep pumping and pumping energy in and only gradually will that temperature rise. But 
we know that the temperature can rise and we know the water will eventually boil. And that can happen. If I keep heating it and heating it and heating it, it will get hotter and hotter and hotter and eventually reach 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it will begin to boil. But even then, that's still lower than the temperature needed to melt this guy. And that's the principle that we're working with here in the pressure cooker because when we're cooking food we are effectively heating water and we can put more and more energy into the water but the temperature is not going to go up this is a very very strange thing to get your head around but the water will boil faster so it will turn from a liquid to a gas quicker and steam will be evaporated. But as long as there's liquid water still inside the pot and the food, and this is at ambient sea level air pressure, as long as there's liquid there, that liquid cannot be higher than 100 degrees Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit for the most part. There are certain scenarios where you can get superheated water, but 99% of the time, that water is only going to be able to reach 100 degrees Celsius. And of course, cooking the food means that there's water still in it and we're, we've reached that temperature. So I can turn up the temperature, but that's not gonna cook the food faster. That water inside is still only at 100 degrees Celsius. Now, yes, it's true that I can really crank up the temperature and all that water can boil off and evaporate and it'll be gone. And once all the water is gone, then the food begins to burn. And I can tell you that burnt food does not taste very nice. And if I got a burnt stew in front of me in a restaurant, I would let out a light scream, something like this. Ah! So we have to make sure that we're controlling that temperature and heating it gradually. So we don't want to just burn the whole thing. If we keep it within temperature, it takes a long time to cook. So what's happening in the pressure cooker? So in the pressure cooker, when we pop this lid on and we, very importantly, lock it in place, we're actually trapping the gas inside here and we're not letting it escape. So hence pressure cooker, the pressure is going up. And when the pressure is increased, something interesting happens. The water is not being allowed to turn into steam. So a little bit of steam is created, but then no more can be created. And that means that the temperature that that liquid is allowed to be is higher than 100 degrees Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit. So the temperature of the food can become higher. It's not much higher, it's only a few degrees higher, maybe 10 degrees higher. But that little amount is enough to really boost the cooking speed. So the food can start to cook much faster than it normally can when the steam was being released and the temperature was staying at a cap of 100 degrees Celsius. Another thing that is allowed to happen is instead of air being trapped inside this vessel, which has a very poor heat conduction, it's now gas water, it's steam. So that steam can conduct heat much, much better. So the heat that's flowing around can really get to the food much better than if it was just open 
and there was only a little bit of steam inside. So we're really levering on this principle of physics and we're able to increase the temperature just that little bit, but it's enough to actually cook the food much, much faster. So now I've got a very tender, succulent meal that I can enjoy. Now, this is a little uh, side note, but obviously I was talking about putting flavors inside or putting some pepper, some salt, but one thing is salt. So if I have some salt and I have some sugar, table salt, table sugar, they both look identical. How can I tell them apart? Well, obviously I can take a little bit of a taste of each and I'll soon find that the sugar is very nice and sweet. And so that's sugar. The salt is very salty. So I could do that. But what if I wasn't allowed to taste them? Well, if I was just allowed a little bit of water, drop of water, and I put a drop of water on the salt, I'd see not much happens in the texture of it. Whereas on the sugar, it will become very sticky. So what gives? Why is the sugar sticky? Why do things get sticky? Well, it's actually a very interesting reason. So sugar is a very long molecule made of carbon atoms, hydrogen atoms, oxygen atoms. And there's something very special that happens between hydrogen and other things like oxygen. So hydrogen is very positively charged and oxygen is negatively charged. So with hydrogen, we get what's called hydrogen bonding. It's a very strong bond that happens between the positive hydrogen and the negative oxygen. It's electrically bonded together and it makes for a very strong force. So in the sugar, these hydrogen atoms actually bond to the oxygen atoms in the water and other oxygen atoms around. And also not just oxygen, other electronegative atoms. And this strong hydrogen bonding is what's responsible, at least partially, for the stickiness. So the wet sugar is being electrically pulled towards, say, the oxygen molecules in your finger. And so they stick to it. Of course, it has to be wet. It has to be in a solution. There's other reasons that add to this. So the viscosity as well of the solution becomes slightly higher. There is mechanical adhesion within that's also increasing this stickiness. But it's interesting that this idea of stickiness is really an electrical phenomenon. Just like when I take a balloon, not this one, but rub it on my head and my hair sticks to the balloon, that's an electrical phenomenon. Just like a magnet sticks to a piece of metal or another magnet, that is an electromagnetic stickiness, but it's just a force. So the same thing is happening in the sugar. So there we go by increasing the pressure of the liquid, we can actually put more heat into it. And it's the heat that allows the food to cook and cook quicker by increasing that temperature. So a pressure cooker allows us to do that. Now there's some other features of this pressure cooker. There is a pressure release valve here and here. So obviously when this is closed up and the pressure is very high inside, it pushes up on the lid. So it makes it very difficult for this lid to be open, if not impossible. So that's where you have to release that trapped gas. The pressure can drop and then it can be safely opened. 
So this pressure release, there's also a seal in here so we can make sure that the environment is airtight and it can hold pressure. And of course, the material has to be strong. Otherwise, this thing will turn into a bit of a weapon. So I uh, hope you learned something here today. There we go, little smiley face. I'm going to give you a slap, sir. He's all right. So remember, dream big and make it happen.